We know, of course, that um, diets that tend to be higher in saturated fats will also tend to increase total cholesterol. This doesn't always happen, but it often does. And there are, uh, within the family of total cholesterol, we will very often scrutinize the lipoproteins that are carrying that cholesterol, namely LDL and HDL. It's easy for us, and everyone says that HDL is just universally good. That's not necessarily true. We don't, uh, you know, there's some nuance there. It's easy, and or people universally say LDL is universally bad. That's, of course, not necessarily true, and I'll make that case quite heavily uh, right now. But what's so interesting about these lipoproteins is that we classically think of them as only moving fats around. They're carrying cholesterol, they're carrying triglycerides, they're carrying cholesterol esters, which is cholesterol with a fatty acid, but they are obviously doing more than that. So a couple studies to highlight here. Um, the first one was just published, enterically derived high density lipoprotein restrains liver injury through the portal vein. This was just, this was published in the journal Science, so a very good journal, and it was just in fact published a, a couple weeks ago. So how's that for recent data? And what they found was that the intestines can make HDL. So the, we typically think of HDL as only being made from the liver, but they found that the intestines will make HDL and that, remember, uh, the, as the blood is flowing from the intestines to the liver, because that's the way blood flow goes um, through that area of the body, as, as the blood flow is moving from intestine to the liver, I mentioned that some LPS, this main leaky pathogen will move through that. But also as the liver, as the intestines are making HDL, the HDL is flowing through that, what's called the portal vein going to the liver and in the process, binding up the LPS. So the LPS that's moving, if it were freely moving through the body, it would be binding cells and promoting inflammation. But in contrast, the HDL is there and it locks up the LPS, takes it to the liver, and then helps the liver then to dump it from the liver into the intestines to be excreted in feces. So the guts sensing this problem are providing a solution by creating HDL. Now, we don't know the conditions here. They're not getting into how to leverage that. I would say, well, whatever you can do to increase HDL in the blood is going to be a really great strategy to help enhance the binding where HDL is right there at the gut, ready to bind the LPS and remove it from the bloodstream before it ever becomes a problem in promoting systemic inflammation and insulin resistance. A lot of my postdoctoral work outlined the process whereby LPS causes insulin resistance via inflammatory um, pathways. So that's the HDL component. And again, a takeaway from that would be whatever you can do to increase your HDL is going to be a good thing. We all know, of course, that a low carb, high fat, high protein diet is going to do that very well.